does Stoicism have to go? Perhaps it's a bit of a clickbaity title, but it's an important topic, so therefore I have to clickbait so that as many young Hyathumos men as possible will hear my profound teaching in this fine video. So essentially, no, Stoicism does not have to go, but it has to take the back seat, so to speak. It should never be the primary philosophy of anyone today. And let's first and foremost talk a bit about Marcus Aurelius, a great man, no doubt, but definitely not one of the best emperors Rome had. His life's work consisted of guarding the wrong border. He guarded the border to the north. He should have guarded it to the south and east, because as I've noted in demigod mentality, I noted on X yesterday that the Rome, that the great Alaric, the Goth, he sacked in 410 AD. It was not the same Rome, bioculturally speaking, as the great and glorious Rome that conquered much of the known world because of a substantial migration migrations over the centuries from south and east. So Marcus Aurelius, he guarded the border in the north against Germanic tribes. And yeah, in retrospect, it was the wrong border to guard. But anyway, this is not the main topic at hand. I just want to do, talk a bit about Marcus Aurelius because that's the, the man, the emperor, perhaps you associate with Stoicism and the most important decision of his life to give the crown to Commodus, and you all know that Commodus was a bit of a disaster. Perhaps you watched Gladiator, it's not a super historically accurate film, but it has that right at least, that Marcus Aurelius, he was a, a stable enough emperor, and uh, Commodus was a bit of a, yeah, again, a bit of a disaster, if we're being honest here. So perhaps the most important decision of his life, of his reign, he made a completely catastrophic decision. Now, anyway, what does this have to do with saving European civilization in the current year? Yes, it's simply the following, that Stoicism, it can be seen as a um, method of mental self-defense. It's something you need when you're on the back foot. And this brings us into, I've seen an accusation against me a few months ago on Instagram, there was a, an account who said I have lost my way because I post about magic and mysticism and the like. Now it's actually of utmost importance that I post about these things because that has brought me to some new insights and this is also why I wanted to make this video, talking about stoicism, talking about the power of belief, talking about magic. So what is magic, you might ask? Magic is essentially that you create reality first in your own mind and your mindset then shapes your perspective on the world and what you can do and you cannot do. So if you have a rational logic mindset you see that it's over, the west has fallen, it's over, you can't change anything because it goes against our logic to think that we can do anything about it and then you accept that and then you use stoicism as a cope saying that I can't influence anything anyway, so therefore I will just stoically accept the destruction of my civilization and then you don't do anything about it. That you can argue that is a misinterpretation of stoicism, but it's a quite easy one to make, so it's better to just be abundantly clear with the fact that stoicism is something you have again in the back seat on the side. It's a defensive technique, it's not an offensive technique, and right now we don't need a Marcus Aurelius. We really don't need a Marcus Aurelius. We need a, an Augustus, we need a Caesar, we need a Trajan, we need a Scipio Africanus, we need a Napoleon, an Alexander, and all of these guys, they didn't have Stoicism as their highest ideal. Their highest ideal was a supreme belief in themselves, a God-given destiny that was theirs to fulfill. Alexander should not, logically speaking, have been able to conquer basically all of the known world. Napoleon, logically speaking, he should not have been able to commence the great epic heroic journey of his life, but he did because he believed in something greater than just logic. So that is the difference between a, let's say, magical mindset versus a 
rational mindset. So that is what I mean by magic, by the way, it's a power of belief. Now, when you hear the term power of belief, you might think it's some hippie nonsense, but now we're talking about the greatest men throughout history. That is their mindset. And what we need today, in order to save European civilization, it's absolutely not someone who just takes it all the time, it's not someone who is on the back foot. So you have to ask yourself, my young disciple now, I'm reaching a few potential Napoleons in my audience now, I don't want you to feel like you're on your back foot. I want you to determine, via magic then, via your mindset, that you are on the offensive, that you are on the make, so to speak. You're not on the back foot, you're not seeing your civilization crumbling, you're seeing an opportunity to achieve glory by saving said civilization. Now, to use another example, you have two guys going up in an MMA ring that will fight against each other. One guy is focused on not losing. He's focused on his defense. The other guy is focused solely on winning. He's focused on implementing his own will in the ring, in the octagon. Who will win of these two guys? Yes, most likely the guy who comes in to win, who's focused on his own performance and what he can do. And the guy who's focused on not losing, he will probably lose. So it's all about magic mindset. I know, again, many guys, they don't like when I use the term magic, but it's, it's the best term to describe what I mean. So in order to save the West today, then, we need someone who is not on the back foot, who doesn't go stoically accepting the destruction of a civilization. So we need less rational thought, because emotions, they will always conquer rational thought. So yeah, it's actually the opposite of what Ben Shapiro says. Ben Shapiro is wrong in many ways, and he says that facts don't care about your feelings. But it's also the opposite, that feelings don't care about facts, and feelings, they triumph over facts, because, because no one is passionate about facts and logic, but many people are indeed passionate about their feelings, emotions. So if I introduce myself as a sensitive poet, it's because it's better to be a sensitive poet than a cold, calculating stoic who doesn't care, who just takes it all the time. So view it in that sense. You shouldn't discard stoicism, you should still have it as a method of self-defense, of mental self-defense. I've used it successfully over the years myself, but I never let it take the, the front, because then you're always on the defensive, you're always on the back foot. So instead you have to have that mentality of conquest. And for the young Napoleons among you listening to this, keep this in mind. Whenever you listen to someone, it becomes a reality, what you believe. So you can listen to these black pillars, who are using bad magic, by the way, because they are reinforcing the worldview. They are reinforcing your perception of the world, saying it's over. So then you have to listen to me, saying we're back. So you can think of it in that you have two spirits inside of you, one saying it's over, one saying it's back. Who is right? Yes, the one you listen to. So always keep that in mind, that the reality of your mind, it comes first, and then that will be reflected upon the actual reality. So you can create a good outcome in your life via first thinking it in your mind. Again, magic. Now, to best understand this, you can just read a lot of historical accounts, read history books, and then you will get this these teachings, these uh, teachings of overcoming hard circumstances, of doing the impossible. And then you will see that in many cases, had they just accepted their fate, yeah, then they would have not gone anywhere. But many of these great conquerors, they still had that divine drive within them. Babur Khan, one of my favorite stories, he took Samarkand, the city of his dream, three times and then he got ousted, so then he invaded India instead and founded a great empire and dynasty there because he still had that unshakable belief in himself and because he believed, he could achieve. Again, this sounds like hippie nonsense, you're hearing some sort of inspirational talk but the more you actually study it via it can be this mysticism books or, or it can be history books, it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing it's about overcoming things that you should logically not be able to overcome. And also, we don't even need to consult the history books to see a good example of this. We can see the great, the great man, Bukele, in El Salvador, who has decimated the 
criminal gangs who previously tormented the population, he did it. And now others can see, yes, it was actually possible. So it's easier the more people who do it. Same thing with certain athletic performances. After, the, after Mount Everest was summited the first time, then you saw a lot of other guys and girls. They also got to summit it because they saw that it was possible indeed. But it's always this, this first individual who does it. Glory to him, so glory to Bukele in El Salvador and hopefully rest of South America, Latin America will follow and then of course we'll have perhaps in Europe also good leaders with love for justice and their own people who can remedy the situation at hand. And then lastly you have to ask yourself where you are mentally and you have to realize that where you are mentally it influences basically everything you do in life. So if you are mentally on your back foot, yeah, then your life will be worse in basically every way than as opposed to if you are on, on the offensive, if you see yourself as a force of nature going forth, conquering. So when I say upwards and onwards, this is what I mean, that we go forward, we have that mentality of things, that we can actually do things. And we never listen to these black pillars saying that it's over. We always say that we're back. So anyway, good stuff, good stuff. Do read Demigod Mentality, do read Dauntless, and we'll see you in the next video. XXO, boom!